What's up, y'all? It's Didi Conway, and I'm back with another Real Villains Part 4. Thank you for all the continued support. It's greatly appreciated. We're at 7,000 subscribers now, and I just wanted to say thank y'all. I'm smoking grits and selling chickens, call that painted linen. It's Gucci. Coming in at number five, I had to bring Friday back to this countdown. Why? 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 Because, bruh, as we know, Debo is the real villain and the hood menace. Yeah! Ooh. Ooh. That's my fight, huh? Come on, come on, y'all hurt And he will always be a real villain, but I'm going to add another one. The whole hood. Y'all watch Craig get his motherfucking ass whooped by this dude. First off, Smokey Soho and Miss Jones the realest one. Smokey a hoe because look at bruh face when Craig handed that gun over to his pops. This nigga's scared. Yeah, shaking your head because you know without that gun, it's really over with for bruh. And to me, it revealed that you for sure wasn't gonna help. Put the gun down, son. Man, hell nah, Mr. Jones. Fish filet forehead ass, nigga. Uh -uh. No, 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 no. Come on, baby, come on. Let him be a man. Getting choked out by a big bully ass nigga, all y'all scared of, ain't part of being a man, bro. At this point, the man slapped the shit out of two women, robbed motherfuckers, punched a nigga for a bite. Boy, y'all should have jumped his ass. Not stand and watch talking about Come on, Craig. Come on, Craig. Ain't no come on, man. Sea creature looking at nigga. Debo built like a monster. All y'all should have helped Craig. Man, shit. What Gucci say? Ain't no one on one, nigga. He swine. I hit you. Exactly. Because in real life, this fight would have ended with Craig being choked out. Mom. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Call for your mama. This man Craig had to stand up to a whole monster because of Debbie. Shut your little punk ass up, nigga, before I drop it like I did this bitch. <laughs> and that's mainly why. <laughs> you can say what you want. But Debbie would have had to throw that neck for my pain and suffering. Fuck all that. Show me what that now do. Show me what that now do. Something else I want to talk about with Mr. Jones. This scene right here. You kids that did nothing but punks. Sissified. So quick to pick up a gun. You scared to take an ass whipping. Okay, I don't think anything's wrong with the message, but at the same time, something that I never understood growing up was the simple fact that they will say that about the generation that's doing all the shooting now, but we never talk about the start. And nine times out of ten, the person that's saying this to a, a young person, it started with y'all's generation. Why is that never acknowledged? It didn't just start with, with us. The guns didn't just start with us. A lot of us was born into it. Why are there so many, so many stories of older people? Like, for instance, my parents. My mom had a story where these guys got in a fight back in the day, and one guy said, be here when I get back. Well, the other guy was and blew his head off. So y'all went from fighting y'all generation to blowing folks' head off. I think it's interesting to always put a message like that in a movie where you kind of down the next generation. However, y'all don't talk about the start. And nine times out of ten, it started with y'all generation, even with the gangs. Y'all started out fist fighting. Eventually, somebody dropped their nuts, did some dumb shit, brought a uh, gun to the fist fight, and shot somebody. Creating war for the next few years. It's always been like that from generation to generation. And I want to be clear again. I don't think Mr. Jones is wrong. I think he's 100% right. However, I would love to see a movie where the young person finally rebuttals that type of message. Especially being told something like that for years. We've never really acknowledged that this shit happens from generation to generation. And it happened in some of y'all's generation too. Everything wasn't always about a fight in some of y'all's generation. And when you got older, it probably evolved just like it did for us. Coming in at number four, Juice. When it comes to Juice, we all know the real villain is Bishop's serial killing ass. I am crazy. But you know what else? 
I don't give a fuck. Let's be nice. Yeah. Let's be nice. We don't have to go there. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong, but you didn't have to say it. I believe Bishop's friends definitely played a role in the monster that he became. They don't get 100% of the credit at all, but they definitely did contribute to it. I think that uh, Bishop was already one that had low self-esteem. He wasn't the most confident. He, you didn't see him trying to go after the girls. I think that man wanted power, and he obtained power through fear. Once he realized y'all was scared of him, but he just treated y'all like the hoes y'all kind of was. Go in, do what we got to do, and jet. Fuck out of here. I think that'll work. <laughs> Yo, what about the cops, man? Bishop checked it out. Even in that scene alone, I think that had they all stepped up, the three of them alone, and told him, bro, we not doing this, it would have forced him to have to redo his plan. You, He already wasn't somebody that wanted to do it alone. This is why you kept peer pressuring the other three to do it. It went from all of us wanting to do it to accept Q to people starting to really come alive and see Bishop for what he was. But by the time y'all realized what he was, you realized the monster that you contributed to. Coming in at number three, welcome home, Roscoe Jenkins. I love this movie. Definitely some truths in here, but getting to it, when you watch this movie, they portray Sid the Entertainer's character as the villain. Beautiful fiance, great son. You finally winning, man. Don't even matter that you can never beat me or nothing. Big yo's. Bro, cause uh, bro was arrogant as hell, <laughs> so rightfully so. However, we have to throw Roscoe Pops, and truthfully, his whole family are all the real villains. My grandson's father, Dr. R.J. Stevens. Been a long time, Dr. Stevens. Dad, that's just a stage name. Yeah, I know. You ain't seen your son in about 19 years, so instead of hugging and, and embracing your son, you decide to insult him, acknowledge his child, but insult his name as though he ain't doing shit in the world. But when Clyde bring his big back ass there, you happy to see him. I ain't even trying to be green when I say this, but bro, he ain't even your son. <laughs> and see, to me right there, that's messed up. Then embrace that you gave his cousin is the same embrace you should have gave your kid you ain't seen in nine years. It's like watching this movie back as an adult, you got to feel bad for Roscoe because you know he dealt with neglect in the form of your daddy not really taking anything serious. And who would want to deal with their parent not taking their accomplishment serious? Uh, TV show is not something that everybody gets. That's something you need to show your, your child love with. That's something you need to show them, hey, I'm proud of you. And for him to not even get that moment from him, I know that shit hurt. <laughs> I just think it's crazy that you treated him like he was the adopted one. And this happens in plenty of families across the nation. It's something that's sad to see. You make somebody feel like a black swan, that, that black sheep of the family. Like they not supposed to be there. And I got to put his whole family in this too, because just the whole way that they treated him and insulted him, it took him going to fuck off on his pops for all y'all to see just how serious and fed up he just was. However, his pops, the real villain. Uh, it's a, it's a lot of parents out there like that, especially fathers. You don't take what your kid do, does serious. For whatever reason, you just don't acknowledge them in a way that a, a father should. And it just sucks. And you pushed your son away. However, I do have to add Roscoe to this list as well. Just because you let Bianca treat your son like he was a piece of shit. He came second in situations where he should have came first. And my thing is, you've been through something like that. You've been through a situation like that. You should have went through all the steps to not repeat the same thing that's happening to you by any means at any level, even if it's the smallest of levels. You work to not let that shit happen to the next generation. And one thing I can say is some people do get, some people do have kids 
get with a person that they feel like they might be lucky to be with and you overlook a bunch of shit that you shouldn't. And that's kind of how I feel like Roscoe was. Coming in at number two, why did I get married? And I'll be honest, why did I get married? Damn near all the people except maybe Sheila are all some type of villain. When we look at this movie, every one of the couples are arguably some form of piece of shit within their relationships. They all contributed to each one of their households being in a mess, but that's not the aspect that I want to look at this time, at least. Why can't this single woman go out with this single man? Can we just drop this, please? I'm so agreeing with Diane right now. This scene right here, to me, is why Patricia and Diane are the real villains, bro. Look at it from a friend aspect. It's really no way y'all let a friend come to a cabin where y'all know she being cheated on and Buddy brought his mistress. I felt like Angela was the friend that would probably fight and would have whooped Trina's ass for even trying to make it through that door. However, you got Diane and Patricia over here trying to suppress the whole thing. And to me, it was personally because they wanted to have a good time on their vacation. Man, fuck that vacation. No, as a matter of fact, let me get another drink so Mike can tell us why Trina can't go with Troy. I believe when you're friends and you, you don't let some shit like this happen, even if you don't like it, even if it can cost you a vacation, having her sitting there knowing she getting cheated on is crazy to me. And to me, they kept trying to suppress Angela because they didn't want the drama and wanted to just enjoy their vacation. And to that, I say, hell no. Hell no. Till the no, no, no. Hell to the no. So I'll ask y'all, if your friend had you sitting here looking stupid, knowing what's going on, knowing they sitting on that info, would you continue to be friends with them after the fact? I'll answer it for you. Hell no. And even if you chose to continue being friends with that, that person, that relationship wouldn't be close and you would probably fuck with them from a distance. Either which way, when you find out that your friend let you sit on some shit like that and didn't come to your defense or didn't let you know and let you go through that whole time, knowing that you was probably naive, once you find out, bro, that's going to change the way that you look at them. You're not going to feel the same. I'm just not going to believe it. Also, we already know Mike the biggest villain, obviously, bro. Y'all talking about me? Hmm? You put my secret out there. Let's put everybody's secret on the table, shall we? Nigga, no one else told your business but one person. You end up grabbing the K and spraying that motherfucker at everybody at the table. <laughs> bro, nobody, you didn't have to do this at all. Hey, Sheila, also, why would you tell any of these folks fucking business to someone you arguably know don't fuck with you like that. That's strange behavior. Coming in at number one, acrimony. When it comes to this movie, it's one of the worst Tyler Perry movies of all time. Movie a bag of ass, bro. But I'll say that for my next trash video because it's, it's going on a trash countdown. Get it fucking trash, dog. Get the fuck off the airway. I'm just going to try to keep this like, I'm going to try and keep from ripping this whole movie apart just so I can save it and have some content for that countdown. So I'll, I'll go to some of the arguments that usually come with this movie. Argument number one, she gave him everything. Ten million wasn't enough for the lost time. To that I say, most people don't have $1,000 in their bank account. How in the fuck is $10 million not enough for a person that ain't have nearly $10 million in their account already? And if I'm being honest, women make this argument. So it lets me know there's a line between crazy ass women and sane women because a sane woman would probably still be pissed. But once she see all them zeros, she gladly go about her business, not care and do what she's supposed to do in life. You can now wake up and do whatever you want to do. You ain't got to work. You got life changing money. That's life changing money. So you mean to tell me you going to be worried about somebody that you just gave up on and chose to leave? That don't make sense. Argument number two. He used her. Yeah, I got to get the fuck out of here with that one. That argument. Because if, if that's the case, women use men on a daily basis. In reality, 
they were in a relationship. They were married, and the gender roles were just reversed. She was the breadwinner supporting him while he was doing something that's not fucking normal. Also, he's doing something that's that, you know, can quite literally change y'all's life overnight. It wasn't like bro was a rapper and he was trash as hell. Traffic, traffic, looking for my chapstick, feeling kind of car sick. There's a Ford Maverick. That shit is a, a two pack of ass. <laughs> and he out, you know, trying to stay out all night at the club. Knowing he ain't rapping. But he was a smart dude. And to me, the person that uses you still ain't staying for 20 plus years. They damn sure ain't writing you a $10 million check after you made the decision to leave when they didn't want you to. Sound like he had her part of the plan the whole time. Like, literally. It seemed like he was going to make her be straight in life regardless. Another argument. He's the reason she can't have a baby. My nigga, was we watching the same movie? Because it looked like to me she can't have kids because she did some crazy shit because she couldn't control herself. You tried to kill two niggas. I'm just saying. <laughs> then y'all say some of this shit like they were just boyfriend and girlfriend. Man, these folks was married and took vows. They both supposed to have each other. Yes, bruh did cheat. When, they, when he was in college, they was young. You decided to stay with this man, and you spent 20-plus years with him, knowing what he was doing. When you're doing something unconventional like that, it, to me, it's just kind of like YouTube, bro. It could take you two years. It could take you a year. Also, it can be an overnight situation. You knew that even when he was talking to you about the battery. Whenever that battery hit, it's going to be a wrap. Y'all going to be rich, which is why when you was trying to leave, bro, bro didn't want you to leave. Also, I also think that no amount of money should have made her want him back. However, when that battery did hit, she immediately wanted bro again, acting like she didn't give up. Another argument. No one wants to see the man that they gave everything to give it to the next girl. Then why did she break up with him? Yeah, that would make sense if he broke up with you and that's exactly what happened. But that's not that's not really what happened. You broke up with him. And first off, when you break up with someone, you saying you done. Why in the fuck would you assume that the dream you had or the dream y'all had was only yours? What did you expect that man to do? Not get with someone else? That's a stupid ass argument. Also, that crazy ass line comes up again. One that is crazy will ignore the fact that she was listening to her garbage-ass sisters that weren't happy even in their own relationships. Y'all will keep sitting right here bringing up everything that he did wrong when in all actuality they was just in a relationship. However, y'all won't sit right here and acknowledge how she totally fucking played herself listening to people that's unhappy. You don't be in a relationship and listen to unhappy people. It's only going to make you unhappy. I mean, both of you are some miserable bitches. Neither one of you are happy with these bastards. And I listen to me. Yep, and she knew damn well she messed up and gave up too early based off letting the wrong motherfuckers in your ear. Now, could Buddy have, have gotten another job while he was with her? Yeah, he probably could have. Yes, but she allowed some of that shit. Should he have cheated on her when they were younger? Nah, he shouldn't. That was wrong. It ain't never no excuse for that. But I believe intentions are everything. And I think making it successful and giving her that 10 mil, keep keep in mind, he went and found her to give her that 10 mil. He didn't want them to break up. His intentions were clearly always to have her a part of the plan. So when y'all make this argument that he did her dirty, Burke gave her poor ass 10 million. And the house back. He made up for everything that he lost. Except time. But you got 10 million, bro. Shut the man, bro. All right, bro. Y'all gonna make me mad. I think it's a lot more to talk about with this movie. Um, I'm definitely gonna put this on the trash countdown. I think TP set us back 400 years with this one.